Throughout our Lenten season, we have not lit our candles as we await the light of the risen Christ who dispels darkness. On this day that we celebrate the dispelling of darkness by Christ our light, we now light our candles. May they be a symbol of Christ, the light of the world, and may they inspire us with new hope. I invite you to join our Easter liturgy found in the hymn books on page uh, 90, <laughs> 9 zero. The Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Sing this aloud. Proclaim it to the ends of the earth. The Lord has set his people free. Please remain standing. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. By God's great mercy, we are given new birth into a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead and into an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading. Praise, honor, glory, and power to the one seated on the throne and to the Lamb forever and ever. Jesus was handed over to death for our sins and was raised to life for our justification. Then what can separate us from the love of Christ? Can affliction or hardship? Can persecution, hunger, nakedness, peril, or sword? No, in all these things, we are more than conquerors through Christ who loved us. For we are convinced that neither death nor life, nor angels nor rulers, nor things present nor things to come, nor powers nor heights nor depths nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Please be seated. 
we have been buried with him by baptism into death, so that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we will certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We do not live to ourselves, and we do not die to ourselves. If we live, it is for the Lord that we live, and if we die, it is for the Lord that we die. So whether we live or die, we belong to the Lord, for Christ died, rose from death, and lives again in order to be Lord of the living and of the dead. We do not want you to be in any doubt about those who have died, or to grieve over them as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, through Jesus, God will bring with him those who have died. What we are saying, brothers and sisters, is this. Flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, nor does the perishable inherit the imperishable. What is sown as perishable is raised imperishable. What is sown in dishonor is raised in glory. What is sown in weakness is raised in power. What is sown a physical body is raised a spiritual body. Then the saying that is written will be fulfilled. Death has been swallowed up in victory. Thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. If you have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are of the earth. For we have died, and our lives are hidden with Christ in God. God of peace, who brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus Christ, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, make us complete in everything good, so that we may do your will, working among us all that is pleasing in your sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever and ever. Amen.
Please be seated. Today's passage is the account of the resurrection of Jesus as found in the Gospel of Mark. According to most Bible scholars, the resurrection account ends Mark's Gospel. There are no appearances of the risen Jesus as in other Gospels, no ascension, no sending of the Holy Spirit, just the empty tomb. Some commentators say you, followers of Jesus, live out the ending of the story. Let us listen with open hearts. Good morning. The scripture reading today is Mark 16, verses 1 to 8. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary, the mother of James, and Salome bought spices so that they might go out and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. And that's how it ends. Mark's gospel ends abruptly and unsatisfyingly. It ends with a description of women fleeing and saying nothing to no one. They disobey the man dressed in white, who we assume as an angel, who commands them to go tell the disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. But rather than doing that, the gospel ends. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now, the fear, terror, and amazement of the women would seem perfectly natural. After all, they came to the tomb with their spices, uh, expecting to find the dead body of Jesus. They didn't expect to see that the stone was rolled away. They didn't expect to see the body of Jesus gone. Nor did they expect to see a man dressed in white giving them commands. In response to their fear, terror, and amazement, they fled and said nothing to anyone. That's it. That's how Mark's gospel ends. There's no stories of the appearances of the risen Jesus, no sending of the Holy Spirit, no forgiveness of Peter, no story of Jesus ascending in, into heaven, just an empty tomb. And two women fleeing in fear. How unsatisfying. I don't know about you, but I like a nice ending to stories, not one that leaves us confused. Even her ancient Christian ancestors were so unsatisfied that they added other endings to Mark's original ending. I, I don't know if the Pew Bibles list that, but it'll list, the title will be longer ending, longer, longer ending, that our Christian ancestors added, not the original writer of Mark. So why would Mark end his gospel so abruptly? We may never know, but I like how one commentator put it. He said, you are the end of the gospel story. If you want to experience the risen Jesus, then live as he lived, love as he loved, forgive as he forgave, heal as he healed, believe as he believed, and then you will experience the risen Christ. You are the end of the story. So, have you experienced the risen Christ? If we experience consolation in times that we mourn and grieve, do we not experience the risen Christ? If we hear the word of God and experience an unexpected insight, wisdom, healing, and joy, 
do we not experience the risen Christ? If we break bread and share the cup and experience a sense of common union, communion with each other, do we not experience the risen Christ? If we face illness or feel overwhelmed and then experience healing and our burdens lifted, do we not experience the risen Christ? If we overcome uncertainties and unknowns to find knowledge, wisdom, and peace, do we not experience the risen Christ? If we forgive and experience forgiveness for the wrongs we've done and feel release and restoration, do we not experience the risen Christ? And if we experience new life after the metaphorical deaths we face, do we not experience the risen Christ? For over 2,000 years, many faithful witnesses of the risen Jesus, like yourself, have testified by their lives that goodness has and continues to triumph over evil. That light has and continues to dispel darkness, hope over despair, new life over death. Every Christian witness of the risen Jesus should know it by our faces, by our mannerisms, how we treat one another, spend our time, and spend our money. A Christian witness of the risen Jesus doesn't despair over the state of the world, but seeks to encounter the risen Jesus in works of charity and justice for the least of these. Yesterday, I was listening on the radio. I listened to NPR News, which is the American CBC. And there is this organization, I can't remember the name of it right now, but it's an organization in Israel where uh, Israeli Jews sort of come to their senses about what's going on, and they stop. And they're like, what do we just do? So they'd interviewed this very ardent Israeli soldier who was a, a Jew from South Africa that moved to Israel to defend the homeland. And at one point, he was forced to um, search a young student, a Palestinian student. And he told himself, why are we doing this? Why are we doing this? See, wars end, yes, you know, politically with grand gestures, but also with individuals choosing to lay down their arms, realizing that what they're doing is wrong. These are examples of the risen Christ. Even if they not themselves be Christian, they do experience hope over despair, truth over ignorance. A Christian witness of the risen Jesus isn't worried about our physical or metaphorical death, but embraces them, trusting they will be raised as Christ has been raised. Last Sunday, on Palm Sunday, I asked if you allowed Jesus into the messiness of your life. Today, on Easter Sunday, I ask you, do you allow yourself to encounter the risen Christ? Do you allow yourself to finish the story of Mark's gospel by moving from fear and terror, uncertainty and confusion, into trust and faith in God who raised Jesus from the dead? Jesus let God, his Father, into the heart of his pain, his fear and terror, and God raised him up from them into new life. So too will be our fate. When we let God into the messiness of our lives, God raises us up from them. Growing up, one of the most popular books was the Choose Your Own Adventure books. I don't know if you remember that. These books allowed readers to select how the story will unfold. I think they were popular because they gave readers a lot of freedom and they twist and turned according to how the reader chose their adventure. Today, you get to choose the adventure of this story, the gospel. Do you live a life ready to encounter the risen Jesus? Do you want to? Or 
like the women in the story, do you flee in fear? I invite you into a few moments of silence, listening and feeling the Spirit speaking to you and stirring your heart. I invite you now to please rise as you are able and will reaffirm our faith. This morning at the dawn service, uh, we did a, f a longer version of this reaffirmation of faith. Uh, you can see that actually in the, in the hymn book, the dawn Easter liturgy. And I invited us to relight the candles that we had at Christmas. Uh, but this time I had asked Ruth to tie a little uh, white ribbon uh, to remind us that the incarnation which we celebrate at Christmas continues and is fully manifest in the resurrection and that we, in this Easter season, is a time for us to reaffirm our faith, the faith that we uh, accepted for ourselves at confirmation and, and baptism. So dear friends, through the Paschal mystery, we have been buried with Christ in baptism, so that we may rise with him to a new life. Now that our Lenten observance is ended, let us renew the promises we made in baptism, when we rejected Satan and all his works, and promised to serve God faithfully in his holy Catholic Church. Sisters and brothers, do you reaffirm your renunciation of evil and renew your commitment to Jesus Christ? Do you believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth? Do you believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was born of the Virgin Mary, was crucified, died, and was buried? On this day we celebrate him rising from the dead and is now seated at the right hand of the Father? Do you believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body and life everlasting? This is our faith. This is the faith of the Church. We are proud to profess it in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Please join in our hymn of response number 600, Jesus Calls Us, 600. Please be seated as we turn to God in our prayers of the people. God's abundant grace is offered to us today, tomorrow, and forever. For what and for whom shall we pray? You're invited to share them aloud now. Uh, Maxine will come around with a handheld mic. And for our friends joining us on Zoom, if you'd like to add a prayer, feel free to do so in the chat. Let us turn to God in prayer. 
In assurance of God's unconditional love poured out for us in Jesus Christ, we pray first for ourselves and for our needs, for forgiveness for wrongs we have done and good deeds we have not done, for wisdom to know what needs changing in our lives and courage to do it, for healing of our body, mind, spirit, and relationships, for a thankful awareness of all the blessings of our lives. In silence, we lift up our personal intentions. Hear our prayers, God of grace. Meet us in our need and in our honesty. In the abundance of your mercy, we pray for others. We pray for Dale and the joyful memory of his mother. We pray for Esther's brother, John, and his wife, Janice, who is facing cancer treatment. We pray for Ruth's brother, Sandy, for a successful surgery and recovery to follow. We pray for all travelers. We pray for those who grieve, the frightened and the lonely, for victims, survivors, and for those longing for justice, for those who have done wrong to us and for those in prison, for the oppressed and marginalized, for migrants and the poor. And we pray in this month of Ramadan for our Muslim sisters and brothers as they fast. In silence, we call to mind those in need of prayer and those we have promised to pray for. Hear our prayers, God of compassion. Send your spirit upon all for whom we pray. In the awareness that we are one with all your human creation, we pray about the issues that confront us all, for our planet and the environment in which we live, for the end of war, ethnic conflict, and all violence, especially in Haiti, Sudan, Ukraine, and the Holy Land, for liberation from racism, bigotry, and injustice, for freedom from addictions of all kinds, for the end of abuse of children, women, and men, for each member of the human family, that all may know the dignity and worth of being a child of God, for solutions to our common human dilemmas, and for our dedication to be part of those solutions. In silence, we lift up the needs of the world. Hear our prayers, God of justice, God of peace. May your justice and peace be manifest in our lives. And gathering our prayers into one, let us pray in the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our hymn in preparation for communion is number 580. He came singing love, 580.
The Lord be with you and also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give God our thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing, always and everywhere, to give thanks to you, almighty God, creator of heaven and earth. You formed us in your image and breathed into us the breath of life. When we turned away and our love failed, your love remained steadfast. You delivered us from captivity, made covenant to be our sovereign God, brought us to a land flowing with milk and honey, and set before us the way of life. And so, with your people on earth and all the company of heaven, we praise your name and join in their unending hymn of praise. Holy are you, and blessed is your Son, Jesus Christ. By the baptism of his suffering, death, and resurrection, you gave birth to your church, you delivered us from slavery to sin and death, and made with us a new covenant by water and the Spirit. By your great mercy, we have been born anew to a living hope through the resurrection of your Son from the dead, and to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled and unfading. Once we were no people, but now we are your people, declaring your wonderful deeds in Christ, who called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When the Lord Jesus ascended, he promised to be with us always in the power of your word and Holy Spirit. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, broke it, gave it to his disciples, and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Friends in Christ, see in this bread broken for you, our risen Christ who conquers death, our everlasting life who dispels all darkness, our Savior and Redeemer who turns despair into hope. See in this bread our Lord who said, take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Amen. By your divine presence, by the holy sacraments, by all the merits of your life, sufferings, death, and resurrection, bless and comfort us, gracious Lord and God. Amen. In the same way, after supper, our Lord Jesus took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Drink from this, all of you. This is my body of the new covenant which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sin. Do this whenever you drink it in remembrance of me.
Friends in Christ, see in this cup poured out for you our risen Christ, who opens the gates to eternal life, our everlasting light, who shows us the way to fullness of life, our Savior and Redeemer, who leads us to true happiness and lasting peace. See in this cup our Lord, who said, Drink from this, all of you. Do this whenever you drink it, in remembrance of me. Amen. Christ, our conquering Lamb, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. Christ, our conquering Lamb, you take away the sin of the world. Grant us your peace. Christ, our conquering Lamb, you take away the sin of the world. Empower us to follow you. Amen. In silence, I invite you to lift up your prayer intention for this Easter, for this week, and season ahead. Let us pray. God of undying love and life and everlasting love, on this most holy day that we celebrate your raising up of Jesus from the grave and therefore shadowing, shattering the gates of death and opening for us the path to everlasting life, we rejoice with the fullness of our being. We praise and thank you for renewing our faith and hope by your living word. We praise and thank you for nourishing us by the body and blood of the risen Christ. Send your Holy Spirit upon us so we may share the good news by word and deed that Christ is risen. We make this prayer in the name of the risen Christ. Amen. And renewed in the faith, hope, love, and peace of the risen Christ, let us offer one another a sign of Christ's peace. And we offer a sign of peace to our friends joining us on Zoom. Peace be with you. Before we conclude with our sending forth hymn number 706, I just wanted to say thank you again to our musicians, Ken and Jen, Jessica. A special thank you to Wilma, who all week during our Holy Week readings played beautifully, and to Maxine for managing the Zoom, uh, and for managing me <laughs> and all of these prayers this week. And thank you all for your presence. All of you are a sign of the risen Jesus to me. Please join in our sending forth hymn number 706, God Sent His Son, 706. Thank you. 
in Christ. May the God who raised Jesus from the dead renew your faith and hope. May God's face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May God grant you peace in your going out and coming in, in your lying down and in your rising up, in your labor, your leisure, your laughter, and your tears. Until that day in which there is no dawning, no sunset, no death, and no disease. Go now, proclaiming that you have seen the risen Lord. Amen. Alleluia. I am looking at you on the screen. Yeah. 